the perimetrium, also called the serosa. Okay? The myometrium, that is the muscle layer. It's the myometrium where the majority of fibroids will grow. Okay? Uh, fibroids are a non malignant lesion more common in African Americans than any nationality, any ethnicity. Okay? Then you've got the endometrium. You've got two layers of the endometrium the zona functionalis and the zona basalis. The zona functionalis contains the spiral arteries, which are the end of the arteries, from the uterine artery all the way down. We're gonna to get to that later on. But the spiral arteries is what we slough off every month during our menses, okay? If we do not slough them off, that means that we're pregnant and it helps the placenta build. Okay, because they incorporate themselves into the placenta. That, that is the uh, spiral arteries. Okay, the fallopian tubes, they originate at the upper portion of the uterus. That area is called the cornua. The cornua. Uh, four different layers from inside to outside, from medial to lateral. You have interstitial, which inserts into the cornua of the uterus. You have the isthmus. We also have an isthmus in the uterus, so be sure that you don't get those confused. And then the ampulla. The ampulla is the widest, most coiled part of the fallopian tubes, and that's where the majority of uh, fertilization happens. Okay, and then you have your infundibulum. The infundibulum have fimbri on the end of them, so that way they, it's kind of like a, a jellyfish, where they have little fimbri, and they suck the egg up into the fallopian tube, and then little villi will carry the egg into the endometrium. If conception has happened, then it, the, the, the blastocyst implants into the uterus, into the endometrium. If not, then we just slow down. Okay? Ovaries. Ovaries are almond shaped. If they're round, then we have a disease process that we usually call polycystic ovarian syndrome. Okay? We're going to learn about that this semester also. Uh, but most of the time, they're going to be almond shaped. Uh, they are in the adnexa or lateral to the uterus and they vary in size. Three to five centimeters, 5.5 .5 to 1.5 centimeters to 1.5 to three. This is always the length. This is always the height. This is always the width. Okay, yes? What is the heterogeneity of the ovary? Homogeneous. Homogeneous. Now, the ovary will have anechoic or anechoic structures in them, and those are the follicles. Because of the hormones of our ovaries, uh, of the anterior pituitary gland coming from the hypothalamus, then our body puts out uh, follicles. But the body has to produce follicular stimulating hormone for that to happen. And we abbreviate that FSH. And ovaries, uh, the follicles are usually going to be anechoic. Not always, because they can bleed and be homogeneous, okay? Because fresh blood is homogeneous. They can also turn complex, and then they will be heterogeneous, okay? So, uh, the ligaments that hold the ovaries in place, medial ovary is the ovarian um, ligament. It connects the ovary to the uterus, the lateral uterus. Then you have the suspensory, that is the lateral ovary to the lateral sidewall. These are 
not covered by the broad ligaments. Only they're attached to the posterior side of the broad ligament. So only the anterior ovary is protected by the broad ligament. The posterior ovary is out into the adnexa. That's why we can get uh, ectopics. So when you put it like that, it means uh, ovarian is the ligament uh, connect between ovary and uterus? Correct. Okay. And Medial ovary to lateral uterus. Okay. The suspensory is lateral ovary to lateral sidewall. All right. Okay, does that make sense? sense? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Okay. This is the way it always is, and it's not that way in your book, and that's why I'm correcting it. Okay? It's always the length. Uh, Can't you see the default is back? It is the length. It's 75. Yeah. The default is 75. 72? No, it's 70. It's here, it's 75. 70. It said it's 70. It said it's 70. Yeah. They're working on it. They're working on it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, anytime. Registry, anytime in the clinic when you fill out those forms, it's always length, height, width. Okay? I noticed it whenever I was reading the, this chapter. It's not like that in this book. Okay? Length, height, and width. Mm. Height and width. are endocrine and exocrine, meaning they make hormones and they secrete hormones. Endocrine means that they make hormones. That's what endocrine means. Like my thyroid is an endocrine gland. My pancreas is an endocrine and an exocrine gland. Okay? So the hypothalamus in my brain controls the endocrine system throughout my body, okay? If I have a mass growing on, on my hypothalamus, it's throwing everything off. If I have a tumor in my anterior pituitary gland, it throws everything off from on down, 
okay? So the hypothalamus puts out gonadotropin releasing hormones. Those gonadotropin releasing hormones stimulate the anterior pituitary gland to make FSH, which is follicular stimulating hormones that tells the ovaries, make me some follicles. The follicles put out estrogen. After ovulation, the ovaries put out progesterone. Yes? The second anterior pituitary is supposed to be posterior? No. Nope. They're both anterior. The, an the pituitary gland isn't even as big as my fingernail, my thumbnail. <coughs> it's a little bitty gland that sits in the tersica of my skull. Okay, just a little bitty gland. Okay, it controls everything in the endocrine system in my whole body. Okay, so FSH is produced. Once my body says, okay, I've had enough estrogen, inhibin tells the ovaries, stop the estrogen, let's put out luteinizing hormone. The luteinizing hormone triggers the follicle to come out of the, of the ovary. And then we have ovulation. Okay? This is just an easier way to explain what's going on in the book. So okay? you, mean, you mean follicle stimulating hormone, when they increase, he stimulates the ovary to secretion estrogen? To, yeah. Yeah, it, it tells it to build over, uh, follicles. Okay. The follicles put out estrogen. And Once my, my body has enough estrogen, then the ovaries say, I've got enough estrogen, let's put out inhibin. So now my body is producing LH. Now, it is producing estrogen and LH at the same time more estrogen than LH, okay? My body gets enough estrogen, inhibin says, okay, let's kick that out. Let's make a spike of LH, luteinizing hormone. The egg pops out of the ovary. Now my ovary, that graphene follicle, because you've got about five or six follicles that develop at the same time, but only one hopefully, unless I'm going through infertility treatments, is going to develop into a graphene follicle. A graphene follicle is a mature follicle. That's the one that has the egg in it that will pop out. But I have to have that LH spike for the ovary to get the signal to spit it out, okay? Don't you like my medical terminology? Spit it out. <laughs> okay. This chart kind of just tells you what, what, what I just said. It's in your book. The hypothalamus puts out gonadotropin releasing hormones. It targets the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland then will start secreting hormones. Those hormones are FSH and LH. FSH is for the follicles. It promotes follicular growth and development, and the follicles put out estrogen, okay? It also secretes LH. The ovary, uh, the ovarian follicle turns into a corpus luteum now because it's let go of the egg. The other four or five that were trying to grow into an, uh, a graphene follicle, they're just absorbed into the body, okay? And at that point in time, Myra, they're gonna be hypoechoic because they've involuted on themselves, okay? So they will appear hypoechoic in a homogeneous ovary, okay? So LH, that's what we have to have for ovulation. 
we have to have it for corpus luteum development. Now the corpus luteum is going to put out progesterone. Progesterone is going to keep the corpus luteum alive because the corpus luteum now supports the baby until my placenta takes over. It takes a few weeks for my placenta to grow. Okay? What do estrogen and progesterone do? And here's it tells you uh, the target cells, breast, vagina, uterus, bone, fallopian tubes, and placenta. Okay? What happens to us during premenopausal periods? Mm. Our breasts get firm and sore. Uh, we have a white milky discharge that comes from the vagina. Okay, that white milky discharge. In the old days, and still probably today, that you would stick your finger up your vagina, and if it was white and milky, you don't have sex that day. Okay? Because you're fertile during that time. Okay? Now, we have other discharges that come from the vagina because, you know, we're bad about getting yeast infections and things like that. But... Uh, if, if you're if you have that white and milky discharge and they used that as a form of birth control uh, in the old days they still use it they still use it they still use it mm -hmm. yeah they still use it you know. like my sister-in-law she lives in a 